James Snowder, Eiffel TV, in a Toshio 20k Global. With me, I've got promoter Eddie Hearn. We're in Manchester, just had Anthony Quality, Ricky Burns press conference. Quite respectful from those two guys, but you wouldn't really expect anything less, would you? No, I mean, they're never going to roll around on the floor and nut each other, are they? They're, um, they're probably going to save their energy for Saturday night. I think they know what's about to happen. I think we all know what's about to happen. These two are going to absolutely have a tear up in the Manchester arena. And I think they're going to give us a great fight. But two, two lovely men, I don't know sound like, you know, no, but it's true, isn't it? I mean, you couldn't meet two nicer blokes. People just constantly texting me on, tweeting me on social media. They don't want to see either lose. They don't know who to support on Saturday night. You're going to have to support someone. It's a great fight. It's a, it's a really great fight and, and a lot on the line for both guys. I remember speaking to Ricky Burns, it must be just before he won the second world title and him saying to me, look, regardless of world titles, I'm going to box until I'm 40. I know, yeah. I will be in like small hall shows. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I'll make sure that doesn't happen, but, but he, he loves, loves it. He just loves it. That's and he's so like, it. you know, he, I saw him, he tweeted yesterday, like, hello Manchester. Like, he feels like a kid. This is his 49th fight. It's Charlie incredible. pointed it out. She didn't know that. I knew it was 40, but I didn't realise the next one after would be 50. Um, and you're right, he does love it. And he feels good for this fight. Like he said to Charlie, he feels like this could be the best performance of his career. Down at 135 pounds, there was concerns. I was, I was concerned after, you know, the amount of fights that he's had, dropping back down a weight is quite unusual. He never wanted to move to 140 pounds. It's just that the opportunity was there. So he's over the moon. He looks well, he's a pound over with the weigh-in tomorrow. So I think that was a, a big weight on his mind. Now he's buzzing, he's really excited. And uh, I, think, I think Ricky Burns has got the bit between his teeth. But he's gonna fight, as always, a very determined anti Grohl who has a huge crowd behind him. It's the biggest crowd <laughs> that either guy I've ever fought in front of. It's quite and, and impressive. It is. And, the they both have. and that's that's nice because that honestly means a lot to him. You know, Crawler loves boxing at the arena. After everything that happened, and you know, you have to understand, I tried to give these guys lesser fights for great money because I felt like they deserved it. So that would be like an out in Monte Carlo. Yeah, on the AJ card. Like, still a good fight, but like yeah. one that they can't really lose. And I, I don't mind being honest about that because I looked at them and I thought, Crawler, you have just boxed Perez, Perez, Barroso, Linares, Linares. It's incredible. Like, and then on don't the be afraid to have a, oh, but you know, I want to go back to the arena and you know, do you, what about a big fight? I'm like, Look, I'll give you a big fight, mate, but I want you to know this option's there. An easy night for nice money is there for you. What about a tough night for, for more money in the arena? I'm like, okay, same with Ricky Burns. Ricky, you do, I said, I'm not interested in those fights. I want the biggest fights possible. And Ricky was the one actually who said, I want the crawler fight. That is the fight. That. Yeah, of course, that. 100%. Yeah. I'd take the easy fight. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm not this afraid to say Burns it. being a free weight world champion. Yeah, right? exactly. He, he but but he, he said to me, he was the one, he said, oh, he instigated the fights. I want the crawler fight. Then I spoke to crawler. And I said, Ricky wants to fight. He said, I'll have that. But then obviously you have to deal with, fighters need protecting, you know what I mean? They're not, I was just speaking to Jose Burton there. Jose says, look, I want, let's get Saturday out of the way. Let's have a big fight. I'll fight anyone. And he, he would fight anyone. I said to him, Jose, I could put you in with Bivol. I could put you in with Babitiev. These are the wrong fights for you. You know, you'll get six figures, but we don't need that fight. If you were 38. It could be and career you, changing Yeah, fight. and you said to me, Oh come on! I just I'll, I'm done. Stink, stick me in. Then yes, I understand that. But fighters need protecting from themselves because they will fight anyone. And then we sat down with Crawler and you know, and Ricky as well, negotiating the money with their teams. And then you get to a point where both guys go, and I say, this is, this is great money for both of you. This is a great fight for you, for Sky, for the fans. If you're all happy, let's shake on it and do it. And, and then it happened. And. Uh, it's going to be tough on Saturday night because I like when Callum box Rocky Fielding, you, know, you don't really want either of them to lose. So you sort of, I, I feel a bit numb, you know, I sit there and I'm, obviously I can't say, go on, go on. And it's not even, there's nothing in you trying to say go on because you just sort of, I don't know, it's a tough, it's not, it's not great for me because I want to stand up and go, like Belfast, for example, Burnett against Zakiano. I'm just going to be going potty. And that's what I want to do. But... This is the right fight for everybody, so I think it had to be made. Let's have a quick rundown of the card mm. of the rest of the on Saturday on Manchester. Some great fights as well. You've got 14 British, fights. British I mean, yeah, fight. championship action. 
a really good fight for the British lightweight title. I mean, obviously you got Scotty Cardle on the card what, as well, rebuilding. What awkward watching Scott sitting there. Yeah, I know, especially when I said to him, "You lost to these, this guy. Who's going to win?" That's but it is what it is. Yeah. Tough shit. You know, he he messed up. He put in a poor, poor performance. He's got to come and get back on track, which he's going to do on Saturday. The British title fight is a really good fight. Robbie Barrett, who put in a great performance against Scotty Cardle, against Lewis Ritson, the mandatory challenger, who... He's relatively unknown. Yeah, but highly rated and has been for a while. Quite avoided as well. Sparred many rounds in Gallagher's gym. Um, been talked about in the North East a lot. He's going to bring big support from the North East. It's a really big fight for both guys. You know, Robbie Barrett, to win the British title, I'm sure he won't mind me saying this, and was an overachievement. Now, they can grow and you can go on. Ritson believes he can win the British title. Steffi Ball has done a great job with Robbie Barrett and you know, he's come through to small hall shows. It all depends how Ritson can handle it because Barrett handled it. He had to go to Scotland to beat Scotty Cardle as the away fighter. Now, he's boxed on TV before. Ritson hasn't boxed in this kind of environment. Sam Eggington defending his European title and a big fight for him against Mimone from France. Mandatory challenger again. Sam's like at the stage now where, you know, like I said, the division's busting open. I mean, you've got Jeff Horn. I mean, he's fighting Gary Kokorin, which, you know, I would like to see Bradley Ski get that fight, to be honest with you. Um, but good luck to Kokorin in that fight. Then you've got uh, the WBA regular title, Lamont Peterson's vacated. Um, so there's opportunities for Sam. He's still a baby. 23. I know. So, and he's going to improve. And what's most impressed me about Sam Eggington is the styles that he's had to fight after the Ski fight. Frankie Gavin, uh, Rodriguez, now Mamoon. They're all awkward counter punches, and it's a disastrous style for Sam Eggington. But he's learning, he's adapting, he's overcoming. And um, just won Sports, Writer, Sports Writers, uh, Boxing Writers, Young Fighter of the Year, which is a, a very honourable prize in the sport. And Sam has gone from being a good story to a real player in the division. People are talking about Sam Eggington. HBO were talking to me about him in New York earlier this week. They are watching him. They are realising he's excellent to watch, that he's a young man. And sooner or later, he will get his chance. Because, and I don't mean this disrespectfully to Sam Eggington, he's a great opponent. He's well ranked. They think he's beatable. They think he's easy to hit. They think he's vulnerable. And maybe he's all of those. But I tell you what, he will stand in front of you and he will have a tear up with you till he can't go on. Do you think he could be the future Carl Froch? Do you know um, what I mean? Do you know what? Carl that? Froch, yeah, but listen, fight. Carl Froch was never like a, he was a good amateur, but he was never a standout Olympian, world champion. That's what I mean. That you know, rugged But toughness. he did, but the difference is, Carl Froch did have amateur pedigree. Sam didn't really. So Sam's learning on the job. Sam, Sam went into the gym to be a journeyman. He turned up in John Pegg's gym and he said, I'd like to be a journeyman. And John Pegg went, no problem, get in the ring. He got in the ring, he had an absolute tear up, he got his head punched off. And John Pegg said, mate, you can't be a journeyman. Like, you, <laughs> you wouldn't last two weeks. So he stuck at it, he came in the prize fight, and he's just gone from there. But you know, already British, Commonwealth, European welterweight champion. You've got to take this guy seriously now. And this is a real big fight for him on Saturday night. Massive support coming from Birmingham. Really popular, Sam Eggington. Why is he popular? You know. Tell, show me a bad Sam Eggington fight. Doesn't exist. His fight with Frankie Gavin, fight of the year. Skeet fight, I suppose decent, but you know, the Rodriguez fight, good fight. Um, Denton Vassell fight, Denton great Vassell fight. fight. You know, Brilliant. Glenn Foot fight, good fight. You know, so he's always in good fights. Um, and Saturday will be interesting. It's a big fight for him because people are talking about next levels for Sam. If he takes his eye off the ball, and he did that against Bradley Skeet. Bradley Skeet boxed really well that night, and he's a good fighter. But Sam got carried away. People were blowing smoke up his ass. He thought he cracked it, and he wasn't the Sam Eggington that we've seen. He admitted this himself in his yeah. post-match stuff. He did, and my old man went in and gave him the hairdryer. He absolutely roasted him. Roasted him. And a lot of people thought he was unfair to him. But it was probably the best thing that ever happened to Sam Eggington, because he won't make that same mistake again. Now, let's talk a little bit about your American adventure. You, you seem to be taking the brand and the product overseas Correct, yeah. to establish it amongst some of, some of, some of the great fighters mm. in America we've seen you, you've been linking up with as well. Talk to us about this whole project and, and the logistics of it. Um, it's something I've been looking at for a while. To be honest with you, it's just really a case of, I guess, just pushing yourself and challenging yourself. Um, Matrim's a family business, which... 
is our life, to be honest with you. So it means a lot to us, and we want to... I guess my dad's attitude has always been, he's a kid from Dagenham, from a council estate, who's had it off. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So exactly uh, his, his mentality, he's always so happy because he can't believe his luck. And he'll always say to me, what a touch we've had. What a touch. It's not like we deserve this, we're smart people. And we're smart people, but he appreciates that we've been lucky. He appreciates that we have had a touch. And it is a great life. My mentality, because I was probably a sport kid, is I probably feel like I can't be that guy. Do you know what I mean? I can't be the kid off the council estate, the you know, the kid done good, who's just sort of come from nothing, look at me now. I'd love to be that kid. And I would like to have tried to be that kid, but also had a nice life growing up, so you can't knock it. But <laughs> so for me it's about challenging myself to see where it can go. It's not just about being Barry Earn's son, running a successful business which he's already set up, you know, improving it, which, you know, I mean, I've, I'd like to think I've done well in boxing and, you know, I've made him proud. But now it's about seeing where it can take us, you know, because I'll, I, don't, I can't be remembered as just the guy who worked at Matchroom and sort of kept the business going on the same path that it was when Barry was in charge. I'll be judged on where I take it. And that's what challenges me. And it doesn't mean that we look at the British market and say, oh, cracked it, add it off, done. All right, we do our pay-per-views. We know everyone's going to come to our shows. Not, not in the slightest. In fact, far from it. I'm more motivated in the British market because of the competition than I ever have been. But I can't ignore the other markets and what could happen. You know, I want to have offices in New York, L.A., and not because I want to say I've got those offices, because that's an achievement. You know, I want to sign fighters, I want to do TV deals around the world. You know, I want to break new boundaries with Anthony Joshua, take him to the Middle East, to Africa, to China. Now, these are the things that haven't really been done before, and I want to try and do them. So that's really the thought process behind it is one, I guess from a personal point of view, two, from a business point of view, and three, because I see the opportunities in the market. I don't see fighters in America being promoted properly, in my opinion. I'm not saying all of them, but many of them. Because there seems to be the mentality of, when your fight's announced, you're in the public eye a little bit, and then when you're not fighting, we'll speak to you when we announce your next fight. So that's no good for the profile. Fighters aren't active enough. Business is all about opportunity. Top rank moved to ESPN. There was a hole in HBO. I spoke to Peter Nelson, who I get on very well with. Danny Jacobs was identified as a target by me. I met Danny Jacobs, Keith Connolly, his manager, and everything that I said, he wanted. You know, he wanted to be active, he wanted to be promoted properly. I sat down with Danny Jacobs and I'm like, mate, you are a superstar. Like, he looked a million dollars. He speaks so well. His backstory is incredible. He's a great fighter. This isn't difficult for me. You know, I'd love to tell you, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with you, Danny. This is going to be a real effort. It's really not. You know, this is bread and butter to me. How, so, well, how has it been received? Everybody in boxing talks, and everybody's always great to say that they love competition. Yeah, it's yeah, fantastic yeah. to have new competition. Yeah, yeah. How, has, how, how have you been sort of received from the established promoters in America? What it feels, what it feels like just America? like it did when I started in the UK which was, no one really wanted to help you. Everyone told you they wanted to help you. The truth is, everyone wanted to fuck you. Everyone don't want you to get on. Everybody want, don't want you to progress. And you know what? I don't blame them. If, if a major promoter from the States came to the US, a UK, I'd probably, probably get my back up as well. I mean, it, it would make me more motivated. I wouldn't want them to do well. You, you told know. me Golden Boy coming to the UK was great for competition. It is great, great for competition. competition. I'd rather they didn't come. You know what I mean? It's the truth, but but like I don't wish bad on anybody. But the bottom line is, you, the more competition in your market, yeah, it motivates you. But you don't really want. Do you think these guys want me there in America? Loudmouth Eddie Hearn coming in. I'm going to do that. Fighters, I'm going to keep you active. I'm going to promote you properly. It's a nightmare for them. I'm a nightmare, just like I was a nightmare in the UK market when I came in. You know, the difference is, when I came in the UK market, I didn't really know what I was doing. I just blagged it. 
<laughs> Not really, but a little bit. I did. <laughs> you know, I, listen, I know boxing. I've been around boxing since I was eight years old. But I came in, I was wet behind the ears in the boxing game. You know? I'm going to do this. I signed all these fighters. But our next thing, we're going to take boxing to big arenas. Fucking hell, we filled one. You know, it was, just, it was all like, it was, now I know exactly what I'm doing. Exactly what I can do. And I'm the best in the game. You know, and I'm, I'm sorry if that sounds arrogant, but I am the best in the game. Unrivaled, it's not even close. So I can achieve in America. I know I can. I'm not saying it's all going to You're going to be based out there front in it? Is there going to be oh, an we'll American be, version of you chiseled out? That no, that's, that, that's really not possible, James. That's not possible. What goes on? How's but, it going to work? But, um, hold on. Crawler, crawler. Are you, go are you going? James wants to catch you. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. hey, listen, we'll wrap this up and we'll come back to it. Right, thanks, Ed, for getting me a bit of time. No on. worries, I was really on a roll there and I can't remember where, where we were even we, up to. We were discussing America. We were just discussing America and sort of how the. You said, oh, your last question was is there going to be a carbon copy Eddie Hearn out there? There we go. No. The initial plan is we're not looking to go in and probably if, it was, if this was six years ago, I probably would have gone, we're going to do 20 shows a year. We're gonna, but I know how it works out there and, and you're only as good as the TV contract you win. So at the moment, we're looking to do three or four shows, Danny Jacobs, HBO. If we bring on more talent that, that a broadcaster or HBO have got slots for, we might get additional dates. But right now, we've got November the 11th, Nassau Coliseum, Long Island, Danny Jacobs, Luis Arias, Gerald Miller, who we're working with now, with Dimitri Salita. Exciting. Exciting. Yeah, really good. I mean, I, you know, I think any heavyweight who can fight and is a personality is golden right now and, and that is Jarrell uh, against Wack, which is a really tough fight some more fights to be announced we'll put a couple of Brits on that, on that card as well uh, so probably four shows in 2018 see where it takes us you know I think um, I would like to see by 2019 us doing double digit shows um, and I think that's achievable but again we'll see how we get on next year might, gonna might be, be a flop you know I've got to try and just shake things up a little bit out there. And it's not going to be a case of the Americans going, oh, Eddie Hearn's got a show out here, we're going to go. Um, but I need to make the shows fresh. I need, you know, people say to me, like the, was the press going, man, wow, like, what is it you're doing in the UK that's not happening over here? It's like, uh, everyone's getting really drunk and having a great time We've and there's the music. Fans, and, yeah, we have, but listen, you've got to, like Brits are Brits, and I know they're on you another can't level. Compare our fan no, no, but, but listen, else. they're still people. They still have emotions. There's other events they go crazy at, so why can't they go crazy at a fight? You know, I mean, we're lucky with the Brits because they love it. Um, are you going to be looking to, to change the way they do shows out there? Five minutes, mate. I'll call you back. Is that important to you? Okay. Are you going to be looking to change the way they, they promote and put more bumps on seats? I've been to yeah, massive events in America where yeah, you've got, to, you've got empty sort of You've got to arenas. create. Listen, there's two words in, in boxing and in business, probably in life as well, that are very, very important. Hype and my favourite word, which is perception. Okay? Mm -hmm. If you're not promoting these things, if you're not giving the perception that this is a major event, that this is a great fight. And when you've got a great fight, it's very easy to do. Do you know what I'm saying? But we had the press conference in New York and I just got everyone at it. Do you know what I mean? And after the press conference, people go, oh my God, that was amazing. Arias was like, hey you, down goes Jacobs. And Jacobs was like, you ain't gonna do shit. I can't believe it. Like, I'm like, fucking hell. Does that not We're only just getting then? started. No, yeah, <laughs> but so now people, are, excited about the fight then from the press conference that's when the promotion starts you know, it's not just me opening up my mouth that's across social media platforms it's getting inside Long Island it's about getting the fighters to go out and raise their profile let people know who they are when they're fighting make people excited about RES against Jacobs get people talking about Gerald Miller get people talking about Marius Wack and, and then there needs to be excitement going to an event if you're excited when you turn up at a venue you're buzzing you have a couple of beers. Oh, I can't wait for tonight. It's going to be unbelievable. If you're not, you're going to turn up and go, oh, I'm hit your hair, sit down. You know, you need to be like, oh, this is, oh, it's how long we got? Oh, 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 this is the main event now. It's the chief support. Oh, this is that Gerald Miller. Oh, it's quality. He could fight Joshua next. Oh, he's all right, loud, man. Look at the size of Marius Wack. Fucking hell, this is going to be a war. 
Then Arias comes out like in a gown, next May with a fighter, <laughs> like all the bling on and that. Fucking hell, look at this kid. Danny Jacobs comes out. You know, American flags everywhere, the golden boy, come back from, you know, life threatening illnesses. They told him he may never walk again. Now he wants a winner of Canelo Golovkin. This is like, again, it's bread and butter to me, but it's not being done over there. You could be like a young Don King. You know, listen, Don King, you really can't say that um, everything he'd done, let's just say everything he'd done was... Uh, was but but I will say one done. thing about Don King. Go on. That geezer knew how to promote. Right? So a lot of people have called me the white Don King. Uh, I don't like that because of the business ethical side, but... As a promoter, let's, let's be honest, when there was an event in town, Don King made sure you knew there was an event in town. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. So he would have been IFL gold dust, to be honest with you. I'm more surprised, just going off subject, that the Americans, especially the American media, don't do more with Don King. If we had him well, he's here... he's very old now. You know, doesn't matter. It's and his reputation ain't the, the greatest. Yeah, maybe. And he has got a little bit of a shady part. Other than that, James, yeah, I'm surprised too. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> No, again, I, you know, he was he was a great promoter, great promoter. You know, the other side, I, I don't know, but the great promoter you always seem to see in the shots, though, don't you? I mean, but there's some great promoters. Bob Arum's a great Bob Arum's a great boxing mind, but he's seventy odd, right? And this goes for Frank Warren. This goes for even Mick Ennis. I don't know how Mick Ennis is. This goes for my dad. So you don't think that I'm just, you know, like randomly, like on people. They don't get it. You, you can't get it. How can you get it when you're not one of those people? I'm one of those people. I I'm, I'm want to be at my shows as a fan, having a drink, watching the fights, being around people, dressing up, listening to a bit of music. I want to go. They can't go. They're not the target market. I am. They don't understand millennials. They don't understand social media. They don't understand what people want in a night out. They know boxing like the back of their hand, you know? Mm. But that's not the be all and end all. Bad news is, so do I. But the truth is, is I get it because I am, I am them. I am the target audience. I am the target market. And I believe I know what people want on a night out. Some guys on Twitter the other day said to me, your, your show's heard. All they are is people that are uh, dressed up for a night out, singing and dancing and, and, having a, and getting drunk. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, well, people want to enjoy a night out. This is a very depressing world that we live in, okay? When you go to a sporting event, <coughs> when you go to any event, you want to enjoy yourself. You want to know that you've got value for money. For me, the best thing is when a, a punter will leave the arena, go, oh, fucking that was a great night. If I get a tweet saying, mate, great night, great show, great, because you know why you've got value for money? But you've got to enjoy yourself in life. So I want people in America to come. Not, not a case of I want everyone just to get paralytic, but I want people to feel like, maybe, maybe that it's a giant nightclub with great fights will you in play, a ring. Will you play Sweet Caroline on the American fights? Yes. Or will they have their own version of like, similar yeah, sort of probably, song? Yeah, Cotton Eye Joe, saying like that, I don't know. But, <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, we have to understand the market. Again, we talk about fans, British fans. They are different people. Yeah. It is a different culture, and we have to understand them. And I might come in on the show on November 11th, and everyone's sitting there going, what the fuck's <laughs> this guy's are doing? You know what I mean? I'm like, sweet, come on everybody, sweet. He's, he's just going, who is this absolute toss pot of a Brit? But we'll give it a go, you know what I mean? And uh, I think it's, it's exciting, it's good for boxing, I think. Um, good for our UK fighters. Someone asked me a question the other day, oh, do you think that some of your <coughs> fighters might start thinking that they're not? Uh, up the, yeah, and the answer is, yeah, probably. Because, and that, but only the ones that are underperforming or aren't achieving what they should be. Isn't that the same for any job? Though? Basically, yeah. But as you go through the levels and you start dealing with bigger fighters and bigger names and bigger stars and bigger shows, obviously if you're not dealing at that level, then the fighters that you know, are at southern area level or you know, who, who haven't been able to step up don't get as much attention. 
and you are quite right that's the same in in life it's just that is life isn't it but what I'm telling you is if you're good enough and you are stepping up and you can go on and become a major player in, in the game what's happening at the moment with our business is golden for you because I'm going to take you to America and you could be a star on the network over there as well say for so, instance the top, top I mean, a good example is Cal Yeffa Right, right. So I said to Cal the other day, you're such a face because super flyweights is a division that notoriously they weren't too bobbing. Right? Now they're doing shows for super flyweights on HBO and you're a world champion. <laughs> so now HBO desperate for Cal Yafai to go over to the States and fight. Is it because he's quite marketable as well? He's marketable, it's a division they're invested in. Um, he's got a very tough fight against Ashida on the Joshua card. Go through that, his next fight will be on HBO in the States. He's had it off. We could even do our own show. You know, and that's what we're capable of doing now. On November 11th, I want to take at least two of our young fighters out. Just get seen, just learn. You know, when you've experienced, Luke Campbell boxed in Los Angeles um, on the Kelbrook Sean Porter card. Okay? And when he boxed Jorge Linares in that same commission in that same city didn't really feel that weird for him you know those kind of things prepare you for the future and that's what it's all about so um, would you put your top American guys against some of your top British guys yeah or is I, it I'll, I'll make any fights people? that make sense to our fighters and to the broadcasters and to the fans you know you've seen it here with Burns Crawler you know I mean I know it's not the American guys but it's still two of our top fighters going in with each other um, but We'll see where it takes us. I'm, I'm excited. We've got a lot to learn. You know, we'll make mistakes over there, just like, just like we made mistakes here. Thoughts on Luis Ortiz allegedly failing drug test? For the Do you know, I spoke to time. Luis Ortiz, his manager, last night, uh, Jay Jimenez, and uh, he wasn't very happy with some of my comments because I said he should be banned from boxing. And he told me, and I like Jay, that it was a mistake and that he had high blood pressure and that he took this medication and the mistake was not putting it down on the list. I don't know whether I believe him, but he gave me a very good case. And it's very hard when you're dealing with fighters that you know, and I, I, I don't mind saying the names, Kid Galahad, um, you know, fighters like that who swear blind that it was a mistake or it was contaminated or something like that. You either believe them or you don't. You choose one way or the other. You know, it's very hard because you don't know, do you? And you don't know with Luis Ortiz. Maybe he's telling the truth. Maybe he was cheating. But one thing that he did do, which was a monumental error, was when you are on that list and you've been done before, you even write down you've had a fucking Haribo that morning. Do you know what I mean? Okay. You don't miss those kind of things off the list. So he'll have to pay the consequences. Mm. Do you think that's the reason why Ortiz hasn't got fights from other well-known heavyweight boxers in the past? Do you think that there was an underlying feeling that he might not be right? Yeah, he, his reputation in boxing is not good. And we had a couple of fights with him. Um, he was tested for those fights on the night. But again, you know, testing something that, I think the WBC are doing a great job with random testing. And, and the British Boxing Board of Control do a great, te great job with UCAD. The only way you're going to beat drug cheats is by random testing. Testing on the night is the biggest waste of time. This is, this is, you know, we're so 2000. You want testing done during training camp? During Out of training camp. Yeah. Because now things are so advanced, James. People will be cheating before they get into training camp. Do you know what I mean? If you're on an eight or ten week VADA, uh, you know, session, they might cheat for three months before, get it out, and then they're, they're ready to go for their camp, you know? I mean, this is so advanced in every sport. The only way you're going to get it is randomly turning up at people's door. And um, we, had, we had just... Tony Bellew, mate. Oh, <laughs> go on, please. I was going to tell you about Tony Bellew. Go on, please do. Yeah. Because Tony Bellew, there's a thing called Adams and whereabouts, so you have to constantly let you... This is in Britain. You have to constantly let you UCAD know <coughs> where you are. So if you go into camping, you know, you're, you're from Liverpool, you go to Sheffield, you've got to let them know, otherwise they're going to turn up in Liverpool and you're not going to be there. So Tony Bell, he was updating his stuff and he, he was getting frustrated because the website wasn't working properly. So he sent an email um, to UCAD 
and it was the funniest email I've ever seen. And it, it was basically like, what are you, what are you gonna do with these people who are failing, failing tests? You know, I mean, I've had to buy a new laptop to update my whereabouts on you, and you know, you've tested me all the time, and all these people that are failing tests, you're not kicking them out of sport, blah, 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 blah. Do you know what they did? They turned up the next morning and tested him. Six a.m. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it is the only way they're gonna get them, and, and this is not, 100 meter sprint. This is the point. This is a fight. This making. is a fight where the ultimate aim is to knock your opponent out. There you go. It's not a race. No. So, how can you cheat to, to gain more strength and to gain an edge to do damage to your opponent? It's dangerous. It's cheating. So, but again, you get the situation. And some people do make mistakes. Not everybody who fails a test is, no, of course. is guilty. In I mean, they're guilty because they've been stupid enough not to, to, to put things down. But that, that is also an offence, and they know that, and you know that when you sign up. Offence is missing a test. You know, if, if, you, if, so, if they turn up and you don't let them test you, mate, that's worse than failing. Well, Rio Fernando Football had a yeah, similar situation. Tyson Fury. Let's, let's speak about why some fighters and their tests seem to be, and results seem to be sorted out quicker than other fighters. Mm. For instance, now, we mentioned Tyson Fury. Mm. Why do you think it's taken a We don't know the story, James, James. It's not... And well, his hearing, and, or even yeah, the but I know it's like, and I know the Furies always believe that the world is against them, and it's a conspiracy theory. This is UCAD. They're not. They're not something we we don't know about this case, and I don't know. And I guess it'll all come out in the wash one day. Is that normal though? No, it's not normal. Time. It's not normal. So therefore, right. like, listen, if Tyson Fury was my fighter, and this was going on. And they were playing games or they were slowing down. I would sue UCAD quicker than, and I would have him out. And I don't believe that they haven't not tried to. I mean, so something, there's something that isn't being told here, in my opinion. Mm. Uh, because I don't believe UCAD would just slow up Tyson Fury's getting his license back. I've seen him at the time, though. It is. So what is the me. story? We don't know. I don't even know the story. What has he failed? He's failed a steroid test, failed an androlone test. Well, it's, nothing's been clarified. We but that's had... why, again, if this was um, legitimately, like he hadn't done anything and this was all a conspiracy theory, he'd be out because you'd, just, you'd deal with it. You wouldn't just go, oh, I'll carry on then. Something's not right with this and I don't know the full story. Yeah. But it just seems strange. It I does seem strange, but therefore it. it seems strange, James, because we don't know the full story. <laughs> that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, again, you know, I saw uh, the Fury's interview after and Hennessy's interview after the Parker fight. Oh, that's all he said. It's just us again, and it. I just want it. No. Like, <laughs> so, it's, um, we'll see. Parker, that situation, he said he wanted to sort of come back to the UK having grown up small, a small, a fan base from his last fight. Did he? Have you had any... Talking to Parker I spoke to or Dave, David, Dave, Dave Higgins. To my mate Dave Higgins. Um, no, I've got to call Dave Higgins actually. He's called me a couple of times. Um, listen, Parker's value plummeted in that fight because it was a very poor performance. His last fight was a poor performance as well. Doesn't mean he's a poor heavyweight, by the way, because I actually rate Joseph Parker. And maybe against a better style, he'll look better. But Huey was clever that night. Actually, if Huey would have done a bit more, I mean, I had it. Quite close. I had How close did you have two rounds to Parker, maybe one. Yeah, only the end really. I thought early on that so Huey kind of level going into the tenth. Maybe. Yeah, ninth, ninth round, something like that. And I thought early on Huey was actually making him look silly, but he didn't really do anything, did he? I mean, and people score fights in different ways. Like I phoned my dad after that fight, and I went, oh, I had that quite close. You know, he went, Are you joking? He went, You can't win a world heavyweight title like that. So he gave it six or seven rounds to Parker. You know? Mm. Yeah, other people scored it a draw or maybe had Huey just nicking it because he was the cleaner punches. So, But I think Huey boxed well and I think Peter Fury is a very good trainer. Listen, genius game plan against Klitschko and I think he got the game plan spot on against Parker as well. He just didn't let his hands go enough. That was all. But, but, he, but I would like to say that he, I think Huey did well. He impressed me. And although it wasn't, I mean, it was a terrible fight, but I think what Huey has shown is he does have the ability to, to mix at that top level, and I didn't believe he did. Potential so. clash with one of your heavyweights in Huey Fury, 2000. Yeah, Dave Allen. Um, You'd make that? 
Yeah, make that fight. Make that fight. Probably a nightmare style for Dave Allen. <laughs> but, you know. But, um, she loves making think, tough fights with Dave Allen. Yeah, but he loves it and all. Um, does. So we'll see, we'll see. But uh, do you know Dave Allen's still the number one most viewed person on the channel? What with his rhino, rhino Twice. pants? Really? He's nearly touching ten million views. For Unbelievable! Pants. Let's hope you can win the Commonwealth title. Indeed, indeed. Eddie Hearn, thank you very Cheers. much for your time. Anything you want to say or do before we go? No, nope, just tune that? in on Saturday night for Burns Crawler. It's a great fight. Two great men, two great champions. I think you're going to get a fight here. Respectable. So thank you very much. Cheers.